Yo, 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 before we jump into today's episode, you've heard us talk about our online coaching before, and there's a reason we do that, and that's because we guarantee our results, we guarantee five times faster results through our proven systems, structures, advanced techniques, as well as one-on-one accounting, one-on-one accountability, we will get you to your results faster. So if you have a goal you're not achieving, let's achieve it together. If you want to learn more, pressure-free, first link will take you to our website to explain more about what breaks down our program, what makes it so fantastic and you can fill out an application there to make sure we're a great fit so we can get you those incredible results so be sure to check that out now let's jump into today's episode what's up everyone welcome to the fit healthy and most of all happy podcast i am your coach and host josh here with his co-host and co-coach kg and i'm on the microphone We're out here getting it done as always. We are back in my dining room. I'm curious what setting everyone likes the best. If you comment down below which one you like the best. We've had two Florida setups. We've had Kyle's house. We've had my house. And I think the key point is we're just finding ways to get it done. Whenever there's challenges, got no daycare right now. So little man sleeping while we film this. We're in a far off room, so we're totally safe. But we're always here to make sure to get it done. Got a little bit of a cold, but don't worry. I feel like I'm going to power through this. And I'm feeling really motivated today. I got some really exciting things to talk about. But case in point, you just got to get these things done. You got to get creative. Don't let these obstacles get in your way. And I just wanted to share this because me and Kyle are always talking about it. We're always saying, don't let obstacles get in your way. Like find solutions, find solutions. And I just think this was a cool example of us actually practicing what we preach. Uh, So once again, it's great to be here. Shout out if you're on video. Kyle actually wants to show you a little something to the video game. Comment down below what you see here if you're on the video. A little throwback action, which is pretty cool. I'm sorry, audio crew, but if you're not subbed to our YouTube channel yet where you can see the video, this is how you can see the sweet thing on the screen, which may or may not be a Colossus Fitness mug. So definitely be sure to check us out on video. But this is Motivation Monday. We are here to get you fired up. Coffees are poured. We're feeling amazing. Did some heavy squats today, crushed the gym, ate a good meal. And let's start this off with Kyle's quote. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to start this off with my quote, which is, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. I like this one. I don't know where it came from. Sometimes I will have a notepad that is just so huge with like different thoughts and different motivational videos and uh, different books. I just started reading another book that Josh just also started reading again and I copied him. It's the uh, Naval Ravikant book. Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, all of that. All, that's right. So nice and simple there. So lots of different quotes there. The last book I read, lots of quotes. But this one I just I thought was very simple, but means a lot to me. So once again, if you aim at if you have a target to strive for, there's a high chance. I mean, obviously you can fail, but there's a higher chance that you will hit it. And I often find that when I do have conversations with people who are just looking to accomplish something and obviously using this example of the fitness journey, uh, some people don't really even know what they're striving for. And of course, if you don't know what you're striving for, you're never going to hit anything because you're not aiming for anything. So I thought this was very simple and I'll repeat it again here and hopefully you can spend some time to think about it and also apply it to your life as well. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Mic drop. Yeah, I've said before the example of being a rudderless ship at sea. That is not something you'd want, just blowing around, hoping you'd find shore. That would be no fun whatsoever. And it's the same thing. I'm always telling people, like, do you set goals? And most often they'll be like, yeah, no, like, but I roughly want to achieve this or this. And to me, it's like me wanting to drive to someone's house and not having any directions and just hoping I kind of find the way there and find a neighborhood that looks like theirs. Like, you're really limiting your chances for success. And the more you can have clarity, in your vision, even if it's loose clarity, like things will change. But if you know, at least we're aiming, you're going to get a lot closer than if you're just randomly hoping to meander over to where you want to be. So that's an awesome quote. And that's definitely something I stand behind. And yeah, it's a good book. Um, Naval Ravikant, for those of you that don't know, he's like a billionaire uh, tech investor. He's co-founder slash owner of AngelList. Really, really intelligent guy. And the cool thing about him is I'm sure everyone knows a lot of billionaires and perhaps their health is in extreme jeopardy. They don't have great family lives or they got a lot of things going on. But Naval is awesome because not only does he talk about wealth creation, he's really big into personal happiness, fulfillment, health. So it's cool to have someone who's done that well in business talk about other components of life and really just kind of break through some of his thoughts. So that was a book I really enjoyed from last year, really enjoying diving through it again. And it's definitely a book I do definitely recommend. And I'm actually going to jump into my quote now, which is the hard work puts you where the good luck can find you. And I love this quote because 
even similarly in this book, he mentioned there was three types of luck, um, like random dumb luck where you just win a lottery ticket or you have some random uncle who just blesses you with a ton of money. Then there's luck that you kind of create yourself. You have luck that can find you. An example of this is if I work really hard, I go to the best school, I do all the right things, I'm studying, I'm really taking care of myself, I'm networking amazingly, there's a good chance I'm gonna find a great job. Whereas if you've never spoken to anyone, you don't go to school and you're just sitting around hoping someone will knock on your door and offer you a job, it's probably not gonna happen. So I've always loved that component and that concept of making your own luck. I remember I used to be really big back into skateboarding and at the time Rob Deerdick, if you're familiar, he's on the MTV show, uh, Rob Deerdick's Fantasy Factory and now I think he does uh, he does one of those silly shows. Someone, you'll know what I'm talking about if you know what I'm saying. But it was even cool seeing his transition from just being a skateboarder to becoming a business person. And even now he has some amazing self-growth videos on YouTube. But I love that he always had this company called like Make Your Own Luck. Like that was kind of his branding for a bit there. And that really resonated with me from a young age. And I just love that idea of like, how can I do everything in my control to put myself in the best position to find success, to be in a good spot. And an example of that too is like health is largely out of your control, but it's also largely in your control. The chances of me getting some horrible disease become severely restricted the more I put in the work to take care of myself, to be healthy, to eat good foods, to be active. Like I can limit that. Of course, there's always a chance, but you want to give yourself the best odds for success always. And unfortunately, I can't remember what the third type of luck was. So we're going to have to roll with only two today. But once again, the hard work puts you where the good luck can find you. So make your own luck, get out there, do that hard effort and see that result. Yeah, even just sometimes I'll meet up with old childhood childhood friends or just have conversations and some people will say here and there that we're lucky and I'm thinking, oh man, like if only you knew, you know, the behind the scenes, the the zero miss podcasts, the uh, build up of the YouTube and just a lot of people don't see the discipline and grind behind the scenes. So that's why I really like this as well because I feel like I can really relate to it. And even just kind of on the topic of like discipline and making that own luck, uh, sometimes people won't really see it. But one thing I will say in terms of just having a really tight schedule, uh, sometimes I'll talk to people who maybe just find that their time is really tight and they struggle on their fitness journey. And oftentimes I have to actually encourage them that having a really tight schedule and having that like just you have an hour to get it in or else can actually be more beneficial because us growing up, building our business, just trying a bunch of different things, trying to fit things in, it's actually honestly weirdly harder to not have a tight schedule because you really have to be disciplined. Like you have to make sure that you actually get stuff done. And I see very often when someone, let's say, has like a week off or when someone, you know, maybe is let go from a job and then they have more time, they think that they're gonna actually be more disciplined, but they're actually way less disciplined. And that's why I like talking about it. I like the quote, discipline equals freedom. I like, you know, discipline over motivation. And I just want to encourage you because I did have a conversation with a client who was like, man, it's so hard to fit it in. And, you know, it just, uh, He's making it work, of course, but I honestly think that having more of a tight schedule, having more pressure, having that just that you have to get it in from this time to this time is honestly in a way a blessing because you have to get it done then versus if you have all day, it's so easy to put it off. And I know so many people who do this. I remember one guy used to say, yeah, you know, if only I had like all day like you to work out or whatever. And I checked up because he uh, was in transition of a job. I was like, how's everything going? He's like, man, it's so much harder now because I don't have that that deadline and that, uh, you know, that discipline within the time frame of the day. Uh, so just a random thought that I wanted to share working off of making your own luck. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And that's a random thought that I had. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. And I guess the fun thought I had is to not just parrot information you've heard. Uh, and this is, I think the biggest, especially I've found this with TikTok all the time. Someone will tell me a fact they've heard and I'll go, I'll Google it, I'll do two seconds of research and I'll be like, this is absolute nonsense. So it is pretty funny. Like even I remember when I was in Florida, my parents were in Florida for like a little bit too. And my dad's like, did you know Florida actually has the most amount of like cows? Like it has more livestock than anywhere else in the US. I'm like, there's no chance. And he's like, no, I heard it from someone. And of course, it's not. You can guess who it is. It's Texas. So it's pretty funny, but I just think there's so many examples of this. And like all the time, someone will come in and tell me something like, you shouldn't do this. It's bad for you. And I'll be like, what's your source? And I think that's where you got to be careful even with yourself. And here's the thing. I can't just be judging without being judged. 
my buddy sent me a stupid video the other day of uh, Jake Paul fighting Mike Tyson. And this is why I don't have TikTok, actually. Uh, this is my stance here. It's too sensationalized for me. And I'm like, I got to draw the line here with the social media. But anyways, these two people are fighting. Mike Tyson, I'm sure everyone knows who that is. Jake Paul is like someone who used to be a Disney star who's kind of been boxing like a bunch of bums and fighting old dudes. So I wasn't surprised when I saw the contract that'd be fighting Mike Tyson. And the stipulations of the contract were... He was fighting. He could tag team in his brother if he ever wanted. Like he probably wouldn't, but if he needed to, he could. He would have headgear. Mike wouldn't. Um, he was allowed to take steroids and not be tested. He could be any weight. And Mike had to be at 165, who used to be a heavyweight. And like just because of how ridiculous it is, and this is where they get you, there's always some semblance of truth to it, or it'll pass that common sense test, even if it isn't. Um, but regardless, I just quickly sent it to Kyle and I'm like, this is hilarious. But I, I actually thought it was pretty much a thing. I didn't take too seconds to look into it but that's where you got to be careful because then you go believing it you tell it six people and i think where this becomes really detrimental is this is where people parrot really unhealthy fitness advice or health advice that they think is good and they come to understand it is true or they'll be like weights make you bulky uh, protein is going to destroy your kidneys carbs will make you fat any of these things are so detrimental to the truths that are out there and it can really restrict someone's opportunity to actually see progress and to succeed. So that's where you gotta be careful. And like, there's nothing wrong with scrolling around, learning online, but once again, like one of the best things you can do is just look something up quickly. Like you hear that stat about Florida having the most livestock, just Google it and you can you can know. Like it really isn't hard and you if you're unsure of the source you've Googled, look through a few sources, but really have like a foundation and a good concrete understanding of the knowledge you are receiving because in my opinion, there's no bigger pet peeve I have than just parroted information that isn't accurate. And I think once again, it can be really detrimental. And in the fitness space, this is where I find a lot of the craziest questions come from. Things like TikTok, especially where the more sensationalized and the more crazy something is, the more people engage to it. That's where you see all these crazy challenges where like a bunch of kids die and all that crazy stuff. So you do definitely want to be careful with this, especially with social media and especially in this space. And that's why in this podcast, we're really, we always like to say things factually that have a backing, that have science behind them, um, that also have our experience behind them. Because once again, you don't want to fall victim to all these crazy things, spin your wheels, waste a lot of time and lose and leave progress on the table. Yeah. And there's so many reasons why it might happen, right? Like that video Josh was talking about was just a guy who was a, it's a parody channel. Like he called himself a professional capper, right? Um, but it got millions of views. Uh, you know, even just when it comes to the bad nutritional advice, like some people just genuinely believe it. A lot of people just, it's like what their product and service stands for. So that's why they preach it. And, you know, they make a lot of money from that. And, you know, it just, it, it is what it is. And like, I just, I really struggle. Like we're obviously, we're not, we're not meant for TikTok straight up. Like we do a really good job with our Instagram, our YouTube, our podcast and stuff like that. I just, I feel like it's just a different platform. People always ask us like, when are you going big on here? And I'm like, honestly, like even when I went to post our video, like I'll repost them sometimes on there. I just like went down a weird rabbit hole. I'm like, oh man, like I need to get off this thing. But even just, I saw another fitness coach the other day post nutritional advice I've seen in 2024 and it's a list of like 15 like very false things and they just they come from people who just have these random claims a lot of times once again no research is done a lot of times it can be from a belief but very often it's just coming from some different reason like they might actually believe it carbs make you fat fat makes you fat protein makes you fat fruit makes you fat eating too little makes you fat eating meat will kill you you should only eat meat eating vegetables will kill you the list goes on, right? So I really encourage you, spend some time just thinking about why something is actually said. I know I said this last week, but what I really liked as I just started the almanac of um, Naval Ravikant is he, they, they actually said, the person writing it is, he is one of the most well-researched in a way, like he questions everything. And that's what makes him so successful in every area of his life. And I think that's such an incredible thing you can do is to not be a pessimist, but to exactly just ask a question. If you're out with someone, even in a fitness journey, like I'm not someone who knows everything. And I'll never believe that. But when someone says to me, Hey, I think this is the way I'll question it. Right. I'll say, Hey, why do you believe that? Like, where did that come from? Like, let me look into it. And I think it's just one of the greatest things you can do. And I really encourage you because it'll make you definitely a smarter and better person for sure. So I'm glad that was brought up. Yeah. Kyle absolutely crush it there. And 
once again, these are all things you want to consider and there's nothing wrong to like, you always want to be questioning, always learning, always relearning. Like how can something you've known be better? How can it be more improved? And similar to that too, one thing you mentioned in the book are like, what are the solid truths? Instead of a new book, like he even said, be careful of reading a book where someone's trying to make money. If someone writes a book just to make money, case in point, I always joke because Kyle read some book. What was it called? The Gap and the Gain. The Gap and the Gain. So I, I can't speak because I haven't read this book, but I asked Kyle to describe it to me after he read it for quite some time. And he was explaining, he's like, it's a gap in the gain of every decision. And like, it just, a lot of books will be like, here is the point. Let me spend 25 chapters and 300 pages just reiterating what you've already learned in the first two chapters. So he's like, you got to be careful with that. You got to be careful with new sensationalized information. Similar to what I said, when something sounds crazy, or if I'm like, you can get absolutely shredded just eating grapes for dinner. If you just change your dinner to grapes, you'll look like me. That's more appealing because you're like, oh, that's way better than going to the gym, training hard, tracking my macros, eating protein, eating healthy, all these different things. And it's understandable, but like what is the knowledge that's been around that's lasted thousands of years that's always been tried and true that's always worked that is like something that you can't really debate those are the things where you want to spend your effort and that's why we're always really hitting like just once again the pillars of fitness focusing on good nutrition maintaining good activity taking care of yourself and resting and recovering like those are the breakdown of what makes a great journey not what protein you take not what pre-workout or create these are supplemental to the main journey and that is a big consideration to have so yeah last thing i'll say about that book that josh mentioned the summary here is you have to focus on progress and growth instead of comparing yourself to others done 200 pages later that's a summary so yeah i just thought that was funny because that was mainly the gist of it i mean i'll never regret reading a book because there'll always be like maybe something you can get from it but it is funny because i would just honestly recommend rereading the books that you like and that are like really good um, versus just like kind of trying out every little thing to say you've done more i guess you could say um, but that's my random thought there on the book topic all right so who do we got for our client shout out today so this week we actually have steven so he is 50 pounds down with coach jason and we've actually shared him before we've shared you know a little bit of his earlier journey uh, around 12 weeks uh, and even just along the way but what I really like about this, and you know, we don't do it as often, but sharing the consistent transformation as he's like still progressing. And the reason I really like this is because I do unfortunately see a lot of people reach a new milestone, lose some weight, and then essentially where so many people struggle, especially when they don't have consistent coaching or they don't have that person by their side, is they really struggle after losing that weight. They don't have a game plan after, they don't really know how to reverse diet and how to introduce calories back in. Uh, they don't have that direction because they feel like, hey, I've made it, like I've lost 50 pounds and everything they've been restricting, they start to introduce back into their diet, their calories are going overboard and they just don't really have like a sustainable approach. So I just wanna share this because it is super inspiring that he's lost his weight and he's maintained all that weight loss and continuing to progress. And I just really like it because to me, that's what this whole coaching journey is about. It's not about helping someone get to a certain point in 90 days and just saying, go have fun, but it's helping them still progress, still reach new milestones, still feel their absolute best no matter what and continue to see that progress, which I'd say 80 plus percent of people don't do when they reach a certain goal. The stats have even shown that unfortunately, I think 80 to 85% of people, like the issue isn't losing weight, but it's keeping it off. And that's what is unfortunately tough. You can look that up. Uh, it's been tried and true. That is definitely a stat there uh, that's been proven. Lane Norton's very huge on that one while we're on the topic of questioning everything. But I mean, he said nutrition's big for him, tracking, not cheating yourself. You can see his transformation. Uh, make sure to check out our Instagram and follow that there as well as his top tips but super proud of you Steven let's keep it going and uh, yeah let's uh, let's keep crushing it here all right now we're gonna go ahead and jump into our mailbag and answer the questions you have shot over and the first one is one that's been on my mind so I'm pumped to jump into it so the first question we have for this week which I think everyone's gonna get some value from here is I snack at night and lose all my progress do you have any tips to stop that and it's amazing. We've mentioned before previously in Florida, like having different people up, it's really unique seeing different people's eating habits and really just being present to that. And 
I've been there too. Like when you're just chilling at night, watching Netflix, trying to just relax, enjoy, there's just such an urge to be like, okay, I need to go get something. I want to snack on something. And as we all know, when we're doing this mindlessly, it's a lot easier to eat way more than when you're intentionally sitting at the table, eating till you're satisfied. It's two very, very different things. And I know for a lot of people, especially when you're dieting at night, you're like, oh, I'm hungry too. And it makes it a little bit hard. And there, there's a lot of things going on here. So the first thing I'd say too is understand the different types of hunger signaling. So there are two different types. There's tolerable and intolerable hunger. Tolerable means that at night, I'm a little bit hungry. I could eat. I could go without eating. I'm totally fine. Intolerable is like if I don't eat something, I feel like I'm going to absolutely break. Now, it's possible to feel both these types of hunger on the same calories, but just have less food quality. If you're eating low protein in your diet, you're eating really low quality of meals, you're gonna be way hungrier and you're gonna make it way harder on yourself. And that is where you'll need to adjust. Even if you're dieting, you should be able to have a reasonable amount of hunger level, a good rate of loss. If you're eating about 80% whole foods and then 20% of fun, whatever the heck you want, and you're hitting your protein. If you're doing those things, it really is quite easy getting enough water. Not too many people complain about being overly hungry at that point. Because once again, if you try to eat 400 calories of spinach, let's say, you'll be stuffed out of your mind. You'll be miserable. You'll be like, I can't eat anymore. This is brutal. But if I told you to eat 400 calories of a Big Mac, I don't even think that'd be half the Big Mac. And you could throw down probably two of those really easily. And that's where food quality really does go it's a big thing. So the first thing I would say is really replace that bad habit with a good one. So at nighttime, if this is just a detrimental time, you find you're just watching too much TV, you're doing all these things, like do things the night before to set up your next day. I actually posted an Instagram story uh, last week about this, which was absolutely awesome. I just mentioned how at night, I like to start with the small nighttime routine. So usually what I'll do is I'll brush my teeth early, which is a fantastic way to combat snacking because by me brushing my teeth, I'm like, I don't wanna go brush my teeth again, that's annoying. I'll lay out my clothes, I'll make my bed and I'll reset my house. So I'll try and just clean up everything, run the dishwasher, or put stuff where it needs to be and by like spending 10 15 minutes doing this it saves me like one day of cleaning for like two hours for no reason so it's a nice way to break it down and like when you have that little burst of productivity i find it's easier to be like oh i'm going to hit my goals i've accomplished something like you're kind of riding that quick little high so instead of like if you're always just over watching netflix and over snacking how can you break that so then brushing your teeth is another one not keeping junk food in the house is a big one if you have proximity to it it makes it way too easy there's nothing wrong with like going out and getting a chocolate bar here and there but for me it's like if I want this I gotta log it I gotta go drive to buy it or I gotta walk and then most of the time like I don't feel like doing that and that should tell you you probably don't need to do it but when you make it so easy and it's just in your kitchen you'll happily run over there go grab it and have no problems but if it does come down to that you're not going to do well and similar to the bad habits with good if you love snacking and it's not something you want to give up snack on vegetables you could have a couple hundred calories of vegetables and a lot of people say i don't even want to do that it's not worth the effort it takes too much time whatever once again tells you you probably shouldn't be snacking but even start to replace the habit if you've been eating like garbage at night start eating the vegetables you'll notice wow i actually feel really satisfied and full another great option is non-buttered popcorn it's actually really low in cows really high in fiber very filling when you have it alongside water so that's another fantastic opportunity um and then Another thing I've really been hitting is just enjoying doing one thing. So if you're sitting down, relaxing, watching Netflix, watching a show you love, watching a sports game, there's nothing wrong, I think, with like, I think there's too much of an issue of needing to do a million things, like scrolling Instagram, watching TV while eating a snack, while having a drink. Like there's just this need to be like hedonistic treadmill of like, give me more, more, more. If you can just sit there and say, wow, it's so awesome. I can relax. I got no stress. I finished my day. I'm watching the show and just enjoy that. You'll like it way more than if you try to just find quick pleasure from a hundred different things. And then on top of that, even just remembering your goals. Like if you've hit your calories, you're on track to make progress, you're feeling satisfied, like I think sometimes just being like okay I'm going to appreciate that as opposed to being weak having 10 minutes of tasty food in your mouth and then feeling horrible after feeling horrible the next day I find that is a fantastic solution so those are my big tips and I've really I feel like eliminated any nighttime snacking whatsoever and I've been really proud and I think that's been one of the biggest transitions for me to just make it easy to stay muscular to stay lean so definitely was happy to share that really like that and even the question of you know losing all the progress I mean this definitely isn't uncommon especially when you do look at willpower in itself, like you'll notice probably when you wake up, you're ready to go, you're ready to eat healthy, you set all these great intentions, I'm gonna have this for lunch, here's how I'm gonna hit my calories. And then by the end of the day, willpower unfortunately is typically drained. So let's say if you start the day at 
100% willpower, by the end, you might be down kind of like an empty gas tank, you know, around that 5% mark. Obviously, you might be a little stressed from work. You might have some different things going on with your kids. Uh, being tired is definitely not easy as well. So there's all these things kind of working against you. And if you give yourself all the options in the world, such as keeping it in the house, um, such as yeah, that would probably be my biggest thing is just not doing that. Especially, I know myself very well. Uh, I refuse to bring a tub of ice cream into the house because it will be gone. Uh, no matter what, I can give you all these tips, but that's just, I just, I really enjoy it. So what I do, and even just the other day, I just... I did fit a snack in that was about 250 calories. I had to go to the gas station and I had the calories left. I was looking forward to it. It was a nice day. And uh, essentially, obviously, it was around, let's say, the same price as like an entire tub. But I'm okay with that because I still felt really good. I still hit my calories. I still ate really well during the day. And instead of just feeling so bad and having like a thousand calories, which I know people have done and it's just, it's not a good feeling. I'd rather have to put on my clothes, get out, go do it and not feel guilty about it because we are all about flexible dieting. I'm not saying this should be an every night occurrence, but at the same time, if it is something that really you value, you might go do that and still feel great afterwards, even if it's even slightly more price wise. But I really like what Josh said and my biggest test and what's really helped me because I do enjoy, you know, a snack here and there. And especially as my calories are lower, the temptations are also higher as well as I am a bit hungrier. Uh, or more hungry, sorry, uh, the carrot and the cucumber test. So like Josh said, I'll just put a bowl of carrots. I don't actually really like carrots, but I'll still eat them. Uh, cucumbers, I actually really enjoy. And I'd say probably about halfway through, I'm, you know, especially after feeling hungry, I'm like, okay, I'm done here. Like I don't want any more. I'll still eat it. But that's just a good reminder saying, hey, you're not actually hungry. You just want something. And that test just says, hey, chill out. You're good. Drink some water, go brush your teeth and you're good to go. And you'll be totally fine. All right. Now for our next question, how can I build muscle and lose fat at the same time? Really good question. It seems like this is something that everyone wants to do. It's still going around a ton and understandably so. I mean, to be honest, this is where I, when we answer our DMs, you know, direct messages, when we have all these conversations with you amazing people, this is the big thing because this is what's really going to help your body composition change. You know, putting on muscle while losing fat is super, super desirable. I do know a lot of people really just don't know how to do it, of course, because it is very specific. Now, starting off, I'm going to talk about strength training because you really need to be following a solid, consistent routine. I would say like the priority should be hitting some good workouts, you know, at least four to five times a week, um, not doing tons and tons of cardio. So I know sometimes when people say, hey, I want to do this, I'm like running six times a week and I'm doing tons of cardio. That's not exactly the best thing. Uh, not a bad thing to be doing cardio at all, but strength training will be the priority. I definitely do recommend a couple sessions of cardio a week. So once again, you really have to be pushing yourself. And this is where I find a lot of people struggle is as I've said before, I'll, you know, talk to someone who's struggling with this and they're just not really pushing themselves as much in the gym. They'll kind of come in, they'll do a lot of cardio, you know, they'll leave about five to 10 reps left in the tank. And this is why I wanted to start with this one. Uh, so really pushing yourself, following a solid, consistent routine uh, that is dedicated towards you as well. That's another very important thing. And just in terms of the nutrition, I mean, it really depends. I would say like, eating slightly lower than your maintenance calories for most people. Once again, I have to put a little star here because it's not going to be for everyone, but I will say for most people being under your maintenance. So let's say on average, you, don't, you won't exactly know how many calories you burn. I know so many people try to calculate it. They look at their watch, they use calculators, and the truth is it'll always be wrong. It's even been proven, uh, I shared something recently that your Apple watch or your device that you track your calories could be up to 81% inaccurate. So that's where some people struggle is they'll try to keep track of how many calories they burn. They say, oh, my watch says 4,000 so I can eat, you know, 3,500 and I should be in a deficit. That's definitely not the case. A lot of it comes down to trial and error. And that's what we do for our clients is we'll set a baseline. We'll give them a certain amount of calories to strive for. And from there, each week we make changes based off of how the body's adapting. But like I said, if your maintenance, once you figure out is around 2,500 and you start to eat in like the 2,000 to 2,200 range, you'll be in a really good spot to still 
put on some lean muscle. It's been proven that you actually still can put on muscle in a slight deficit. Of course, if you start eating 1200 calories, there's just no way you're going to be losing a lot of muscle and that's just not going to work at all. So that's why I recommend a slight, um, slight deficit or around maintenance. See how it looks, see how you start to change your, your strength should be going up. Your photo should be changing each month. Your measurements should be good. Your weight should be going slightly down. And you'll notice when you look in the mirror, even if you didn't put on 20 pounds of muscle, you might actually look like it because your body's starting to shape nicely and that's going to be my biggest thing but we help people do this every single day just like you there's a lot to it and that's why i do recommend filling out that form because we will take care of you for sure yeah kyle popped off there all fantastic fantastic answers and i think to summarize it really just comes down to doing everything better redefining your concept of normal and just the more you can lock into being on a great macro plan being on top of your protein training better using more advanced training techniques obviously utilizing things like dup using just understanding volume in general understanding like overloads deloads all these different things and really just being maximal with how you apply yourself that you're doing the most efficient movements and you're not overtaxing your cns all these different things like really being in a great routine for you eating well challenging what is normal to you like if you've been someone who's only lifted like three times a week getting that volume up bringing more intensity bring more awareness training harder eating more going on more walks like it to get somewhere you've never been you got to do something you've never done and a big part of this too if you want to lose fat and gain muscle is just getting after it being hungry and that's where obviously we love helping people through all the processes and really just being maximal with what everyone can achieve there. And by fine tuning these things and doing them in a way that is sustainable as well, it goes so much further than just being all or nothing with it and only seeing a little bit of progress. So it's doing that, doing it consistently. Once again, we'd love to help you with it. If not, just get out there and just improve in every area of your life and just look at how you can do things better, research, be hungry, and just really apply yourself. And you'll be amazed with what you can achieve. But now to our third question, and this was a fun one, a little bit more of a casual one, but it's how can I hit 10 K steps in a day. And for some people, I know 10 K is a joke. You crank in your sleep. You don't got to look at your watch. Other people, it is a grind. And I've been on both sides of this. So I went to school in downtown, like downtown Toronto. I went to Ryerson at the time. It's called uh, TMU now, I think they renamed it, whatever. Anyways, um, going to school downtown, I was taking the subway, I was walking everywhere. Like it was, I just walked everywhere. It was simple. And then getting out of that and kind of just being a little bit more sedentary, driving around, going from coffee shop to coffee shop, only really lifting in the gym. Like if I didn't go on any extra walks, my steps would probably be like three to 4,000 a day. And it's amazing to me. I'll have people come to the program and I'll want a baseline of their activity sometimes, seeing office workers who move two to 3,000 steps a day. Like 10,000 is that sweet spot. This was done way long ago and they found it was a good spot for it. And I know I feel my best around there. Like 15 is a pretty solid day. Anything under five, like you've hardly moved. Like you really do feel good here. And keep in mind, motion is lotion. When you're walking, even the leading back expert, Sue McGill, He's really stressed that the best thing you can do for healthy back is walking. And if you're someone who's sitting a lot and you got really tight hips and you want to avoid interior pelvic tilt, getting out walks, they're absolutely fantastic. So to the point of how to hit 10K steps. So Kyle made a joke the other day. We always park far away because we don't want to get doored. Getting doored is not a fun thing. And I also like the steps. So for me, I'll park at Lifetime, like at the farthest part of the parking lot where no one can park beside me on the one side at least so I can take some control. And this is an example of making your own luck too. If you don't want to get doored, um, you can make your own luck at least by limiting your exposure to one side. I'm sure someone still can door you. Um, it can absolutely happen, but at least I'm limiting my chances. And I think that's a fun example of it. And I'm able to get more steps. Another example is the child cares on the third floor at Lifetime. The gym's on the second floor. I mentioned this before. It kills me and my son just getting heavier and heavier. I think he's like 28 pounds now but I always go up the stairs. The elevator's there and every day I want to be weak and do it, but I'm like, okay, this is going to compound to such amazing results. And something like parking a little farther away, you might be like, oh, good for you, buddy. That's a hundred steps. But you do that over thousands and thousands of times in your life. Like these are all compounded results that you'll get. It's like saving an extra dollar a day or something like that. That can multiply to surreal sums of anything. So I think just finding those little inches goes a long way, taking the stairs, walking a little farther. Like these are things that will compound and be beneficial. I try to walk wherever makes sense. Like I'm fortunate to live near grocery stores and other things. And although I could drive over, I do make a great effort to walk and really make that count. 
On top of that is just getting out on walks. Like the morning walk is probably one of my favorite things because I find it such a natural way to wake up. I do it before I'm on my phones. My dog thanks me for it. I love the sunlight. Even for my son, I think it's good just to be outside, breathing in fresh air. It's fantastic. And if you aren't someone who walks, like I know it's odd to just suddenly make that habit, but making a habit of it feels fantastic. And I've never regretted going on a walk ever. It's one of those things that's hard to do, but when you get out there, you feel so good. Whether you're just alone in your thoughts, you're listening to an audiobook, like these are small ways that will compound to a lot more. So for me, a typical day I'll walk, usually a 20 minute walk in the morning. I'll usually do one 30 minute walk at night. I'll go to the gym. I'll do my normal things. And that most often is 10 K steps in and of itself. So it is pretty simply to do, especially if you do do about an hour of walking in the day and keep in mind, it doesn't have to be structured. It could be you walking to work or the office or coffee shop or whatever it may be, but making an effort to be active. And even if I am only net walking like an hour, hour and a half total in my day, if you consider the gym and all those other things, that's out of 24 hours. Like I think that's totally within reason. So try to establish a new normal. If you've only been doing three, start moving 10, you'll be amazed. And I've seen hyper overweight people. One of the best advice I give them like three, four, 500 pounders is just walking more. Like if you just start cranking walks, it's amazing. I've seen people lose hundreds of pounds just lifting and walking and not really doing much different. Um, it really is powerful getting that baseline in, but I know Kyle will have some killer tips for this too. Yeah. I just, to this day, I still do believe it is very underrated. Honestly, like I'm just, I'm so grateful for the day where I just started to say, you know what, I'm going for more walks. And I think sometimes people do look at steps, for example, let's say 10, even if you're striving for 15 K, they think that they have to be doing these like crazy runs and doing like all this, like kind of crazy stuff that just doesn't really work for them or doesn't fit their lifestyle. But like, if you can find any ounce, like Josh said, like a hundred here, 500 here, even yesterday I did three 20 minute walks. It was just, it was a really nice day. I did my morning one, I did my afternoon. And then I got like a nice little sunset one in which I was like so pumped about. And they all just felt so incredible. Like even in Florida, I loved doing a bunch of fun things. Like we'd go out to restaurants, we'd do all these things. But I was even saying to Josh, like one of my favorite things here is just going on a nice walk going on our mansion walk, our river walk, our beach walk. So we had like three different walks, which we would do. And the dogs loved it. Our friends loved it. And it was also free, which was pretty cool. So I'd say that's one of my biggest things. And aside from that, even like if there is a crazy, not nice day, like it's just really rainy out. I've actually taken a look at my watch and seen, okay, I'm at 2000 steps right now. Maybe I skipped out on some sort of walk and I don't really want to do a ton during the day. Um, and I would do a lot of pacing in the gym. So depends on obviously your gym atmosphere, but it has been proven that you can get even upwards of like 4,000 steps. I think coach Jason posted on one of his reels recently showing that he did that, which I thought was pretty cool. So there's definitely lots of ways. Like even if you think about it in the gym, if you have a minute, a minute and a half break, you leave your stuff by the equipment like you know you don't want to leave it empty or else someone will take it leave your sweater there leave your band your water whatever it is do a little bit of pacing back and forth each time in between it's not exactly exhausting you like if someone were to be jumping up and down but it's just getting you some extra steps which feels incredible boost your steps and by the end of it you're like holy i just got an extra couple thousand which is incredible so yeah, you're not too good for those small things, especially if you are seated. Like I highly recommend you if you work an office job, set reminders even every half an hour, every whatever. It's also really beneficial for resetting your posture. So a lot of times if you're sitting, let's say for three hours straight, you'll find your back hurts, your neck hurts, your everything hurts, you're leaning over a lot, your posture is poor. So if you give yourself even just a little bit of time to walk to the cooler to, you know, go to wherever and just get a lap in or something, you'll feel better, your body will thank you, your steps will be in and there's so many different benefits there. All right, so those are our top tips. We really do hope this helped you. Um, we really hope you enjoyed this episode too. I think it was jam packed and absolutely amazing. We'd love to work with you one on one, you deserve it. Once again, it's so easy to make investments everywhere else in your life doing your hair, doing new clothes, going out, doing all these different things, buying all these supplements, but invest in yourself. That is something that is just going to pay incredible, incredible dividends and just compound and compound and compound. We've been doing this well over 10 years. <clears throat> we're just, sorry, approaching 4,000 transformations, which we're incredibly proud of, and you deserve to be our next one. So we'd love to help you out. Pressure free. You can learn more on that top link. Definitely check that out. Uh, we'd love to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. If that interests you, fill out that submission. I can't wait to see you on the other side where we do an incredible transformation over these next 90 days. I want to thank everyone for tuning in as always. We'll see you on Thursday. Peace out.